Good day, everybody. Today, uh, we'll be talking about the part one of kidney stones. Now, this is a very compressed, uh, uh, this is uh, recording is done in very compressed fashion because we'll talk about the basic, uh, you say the basic concepts of kidney stones. This is the time for one of the lecture. In the part two, we'll talk about the case-based scenarios. This is for our medical student friends uh, to keep a proper hold of what are really kidney stones is, what questions they are going to get in their examination. Okay, so let me share my screen. Uh, this is, this is about, uh, this is the first, uh, the basic con core concepts of kidney stones. Now, as you can understand, a patient with a kidney stone presents with uh, either an acute, uh, acute ureteric colic, where can the stone may be lost in his ureter, or a fixed renal pain if the stone is within the kidney. And if it is having a stone lost in the ureter, you can have at all with at plus with this colic symptoms will have nausea, vomiting, and often can have hematuria. Okay, so this is the location of the stones and the symptomatology, which is the location of the stones. Okay, so if you have a pass stones partially obstructing the uropelvic junction, the stone obstructing the PUG, causing hydronephrosis, obstructive neuropathy, then they can have. Uh, plus a fixed renal stone, fixed renal pain, they can have stone, which is pain, which is radiating in front, in the front, okay. And uh, if the stones in the ureter, they can, the, the, then they will have a, a, a stone pain due to the dilate, proximal direction causing a renal distension. Okay, it can cause capsular stretching, causing pain. It can cause also nausea, vomiting. Plus there will be nerves, there will be nerve irritation on the wall of the ureter, which gets stretched due to the stone impaction and cause also cause colicky pain. So the pain can radiate along the hypogastric iliogenal nerve and curve from back to the front. So loin to groin pain. For patients having a distal uretric stones, they can have even pain radiating to the tip of the penis or to the scrotum or in females to the labia. That's very important. But the patient stones may be passed in the bladder. Most of the small cells even in females, they can be passed as such to the urination because the urethra is shorter and wider than the ureter. So if the stone is not lost for quite some time with the bladder and allow, allow it to be grown, then, then the patient can have an obstruction or else the stone may go out. But for males, because they have a long segment to pass, that there's a prostate also, they also need treatment. They can have severe strangury. That is a pain at the tip of the penis at the end of maturation when the stone gets lost in trigo and cause severe irritation. So strangury is a symptom of a stone, bladder stone, which is impacted at the trigone. Okay, so examination of the patients, obviously, you will have a dramatic costovertebral, that is the renal angle tenderness on percussion or simple palpation. Sometimes they can have patients symptoms of uh, uh, absence of peritoneal signs, painful testicles, they're all referred symptoms, okay. And all the patients can be completely breathing in pain due to colicky symptoms, they can have tachycardia and hypertension. And very important to a urinalysis in these cases can have a RBCs in plenty in these patients. Okay. This is the this is signs. This is the this is the finding on the clean urine microscopy that clinches your diagnosis. Patient is otherwise having a clear urine. Patient is not having major microscopic, uh, I mean, bacteria, bacterial less count is less, but is having microscopic hematuria. So rest assured, we'll be dealing with the impact stone in the ureter. Okay. The following imaging studies, obviously, HCT KOB is done with the patient in acute colic at the emergency department. Ultrasound just to show whether this hydronephrosis or not. Cannot delineate a ureter stone, but can delineate a, a kidney stone. But X ray KOB, they're often being camouflaged by bowel gases. IVP, obviously, is very important to know the function anatomy but again CT IVP has superseded the play the x-ray IVP and the retrograde palliography you do in the OT table. So this is the medical management of an acute stone colic. You have to give proper IV hydration, allays, anxieties, giving me NSAIDs if it's creatine level. This doesn't have a history of renal impairment and you can give alpha, alpha blockers also antiemetics from his vomiting, alpha blockers versus stone pads called medical expulsive treatment and also give antibiotics because any obstructive system is liable to have infection. So these are the following drug classes to for stone prevention. If the patient is having, see, 80 percent of kidney stones are calcium oxalate, right? So these are present in acidic unit. So the first thing important is you have to alkalize the unit. And what did how do you alkalize? You can use alkalizing agents like potassium citrate, sodium bicarb. Okay. Now uric acid, 20 percent of gout patients will have uric acid stones. Okay. So uh, for these patients have a hyperuricosemia. 
So obviously, you give all this uh, febustat and uh, allopurinol to control its high uric acid levels in the blood. Also, for a uric acid high, they will have you also acidic urine. Again, this again you have to give potassium side and all this. These are these are recurrent stone formers, uric acid stone. So basically, you have to if the small stones, you have to try to give a medical expert treatment or ESWLs and they give for major stone surgeries because they often come with recurrence follow-up. And uh, if you have a hypercalciuria, all these calcium oxalate stones, okay, they can be calcium oxalate monohydrates, they're very hard stones and they're difficult to break. Calcium oxalate dihydrate are very soft stones. Now, uh, all this they will have, uh, uh, if, if the patients have a hypercalcemia, then you have to treat as such. So you have to get a calcium levels done. Also, you have to do urinary 24 hour urinary calcium levels. Okay. The patient of hypercalciuria causing these calcium stones, then you can have to give thiazide di diuretics for the treatment for long term basis. Okay. Now, there's something called, uh, if you see, if you come to the last slide, now, there's something called the promoters of stone formation, the, the inhibitors of stone formation. So there must be a balance between these two for the stone actually to happen. So what is known as uh, citrate is basically is, uh, 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 is the inhibitor of stone formation. So all this, uh, all this uh, lemon juices and all this uh, uh, citrus foods are good in the form that they are flooded with citrate. They prevent stone formation. But again, oxalates, as you can find in cucumbers and all these things, they are very high. Uh, uh, the, the, Good promoters. They're the bad. They're basically bad agents because they're promoters of stone formation. So basically, you have to have a balance between these two. Now, uh, what are the surgical options you have for an emergency case? You have to go a stent placement or PCN. Obviously, these are treatment protocols. You can use extracorporeal shock with the dipsy, ureterinoscopy, open uh, puppy CNLs, and open naprostomies. If for large, very stones, hard stones, staggered stones, the stones which involving whole part of the kidney, you have an anatomic nephrotherapy. So basically, you're cutting over the bivalve the kidney from behind through the broadels, uh, uh, broadels line of ischemic line. So you don't have major bleeding. Again, you have to control the renal artery renal vein. You put in a lot of ice packs and go for cold ischemia, okay? Now, this is a pathology formation of stones. Basically, it's, all this boils down to two things, the saturation theory. If you have a, basically a, a cup of water and you put a lot of salts, stir, 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 the salt get dissolved. After some time, the salt get deposited. The more of salts being deposited. If you more, more, more of the salts. So this is a super saturation theory. So saturation becomes a super saturated. But again, there's something. This is important. This is a formation of crystals. But formation of crystals and uh, basically they need to get aggregate and then they form stone formation. So before the stone formation, the balance between the, the promoters of stone formation and the inhibitors of the stone formation. The, the promoters go above. The inhibitors come down then this balance is not maintained. Then there's what is known as the formation product. So the saturation product, formation product, where actually the stone formation takes place. Okay. And previously we've seen that if you if we, we talked about this medullary interstitial gradient in the renal physiology classes on the, on the YouTube uh, video we talked about. So the tip of the loop of the Henley, there will be a lot of salt. And all this lot of salt, all these things will form stone formation. And actually, this Randall plaques is actually formed by the tip of the Henle. Then they get they they go uh, they go through the renal interstitium into the what is known as the fornix and renal pyramids, the papilla, and they form the small small plaques, the like renal plaques. With time, they get dislodged and form stones in the calyces. Okay, so these are the basically the pathology formation of stones, and this is all I need to talk to, uh, today. And uh, uh, if you have any question, you can write down in the comment section. And please also come to my website. I have just given the link. So there will be more classes, video classes on this kidney stones for medical students, for uh, also for our technologists, our medical technologists who need to have a proper idea of these urology issues. And also for the general population who need to have a proper awareness. So thank you to with this. Uh, with this, I need to sign up. And just I'll meet you later in the next uh, module of this stone disease, which is depends on the case-based discussion. I would like to be more interactive and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.